It's 4.50 a.m. race morning and I am leaving for Craftsbury, Vermont, close to the Canadian border. And it's about a three hour and 15 minute drive and the roads are pretty rough up there. So I get myself lots of time. Going to listen to an audiobook. I'm not sure which, I gotta pick it soon. We just finished David Farley's book, Modern Software Engineering, which is pretty good, even if you're not a coder very similar to my philosophy. Anyway, my skis are waxed. I am packed with my ridiculous new suit and uh, I'm gonna take my time, stretch every hour on the road, get out, walk around for a little bit and I will see you in Craftsbury. I'm stopping every hour and using a massager on my butt because my butt gets really sore and when I show up at a race after a three plus hour drive, my butt is really tingly. So stopping, doing a couple minutes of massage and then continuing on. at the Craftsbury Outdoor Center and I'm parked next to Adam Martin <laughs> who I just watched in the 2019 World Championships in Seafeld. Maybe I can get an interview. I learned a lot about skating technique by watching him blow by me in a roller ski race two years ago. I just bumped into one of my old Middlebury teammates, John Ogden. And if that name is familiar to you, yes, he is the father of the recent Ogdens. So he's going to do an interview in a moment here. He's uh, part of the timing crew, so he's getting things set up at the moment. We've got John Ogden, who... John, what class in Middlebury were you? I was uh, class of 89. 89, so I was yeah. class of 90. So John and I raced at Middlebury together, and he's gone on to become a timer. You're going to be timing the race today? Among other things. Among other things. Yeah. So what are those other things? What are you up to now? In the ski world? Yeah. Uh, I do a fair amount of, uh, well, less now than I used to, but I, I did a fair amount of coaching at the BKL level. Oh, fun. Uh, and I was on the NENSA board for probably 15 years, the New England Nordic Ski Association. Uh, I'm also on the board of the SMS T2 team. Oh, wow. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, the timing company and, you know, I don't, you know. So All you, sorts of things. You've become people. a Caldwell. <laughs> Not quite that well, but uh, that's that's a, that's the next tier. <laughs> yeah. Are you aspiring to Caldwell status? Is that uh, the <laughs> I, I think the Caldwells can have it. Okay. I do a lot. I, I do still do a lot of work with Sferi, though, who's a neighbor of ours. So yeah, we we work together. All right. So John, I have to ask. Did you have anything to do with the success of your children? <laughs> <laughs> did you motivate them? Did you inspire them? Um, did you whip them out there while they were skiing at two years old? <laughs> what I think I did was I made skiing easily available to my children. Um, you know, I groomed trails at our house. I made sure that if they wanted to ski, we had programs available, races available. I don't, I, you'd have to ask my children. I don't feel like I pressured them at all into skiing. Uh, what I, my goal was to make it easily available to them if it's something they wanted to do. Um, all three of them do it, which is kind of remarkable, and all three of them do it very well, which is even <laughs> more remarkable. Understatement. <laughs> um, and uh, so yes, I think both my wife Andrea and I, our goal was just to sort of make it available to them, and we also, you know, the two of us, Andrea and I, always said to ourselves that we would support our children in their skiing endeavors that they wanted to pursue. Uh, the way we phrased it was, if they're all in, we're all in. Uh, and so that's kind of how we've approached it thus far with our kids. And of course, you know, that's my perspective. You might you might interview one of the children and they might tell you that he was like relentless and awful and made us do it. I don't think they'd say that. I hope they don't, but you never know. 
You've seen technique change, obviously, working with your kids and with the Stratton T2 team. I'm just getting back into this starting in 2021. Yeah. So the technique is brand new to me. I mean, we skated, obviously, at Middlebury, but yeah. nothing like they're doing now. It's a very different skate technique. Have you changed your technique? Have you been able to upgrade to the yes. new Yes, so mother? when I moved back east, so I went out, uh, I went out west after I graduated from college. I stepped away from cross country skiing for a good long time. I did it infrequently, even not at all some winters when I lived out in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, I got back into it when I moved back to Vermont. Relatively quickly, Sferi Caldwell kind of got me roped back into coaching at the BKL level. And one of the things that I realized was even at the BKL level, because um, I tended to work with the sort of sixth, seventh, and eighth grade level kids, um, I was gonna have to learn how to ski better than I then knew how to ski. And so I talked to Sferi a lot. I spent a lot of time with the SMS kids. Um, and I pretty much taught myself sort of new skate technique. I would, uh, I, I found the biggest difference was the, the sort of dominance of V2. Yeah. Uh, and, the, and the different muscle groups that that uses. And so I would go out on our local uh, Forest Service road, which is um, not plowed and so snowmobiled in the winter. And you can, you know, ski for, you know, 20 miles on it uh, out and back. And um, I would force myself to V2 for two hours. Wow. Just nothing but V2. <laughs> Uh, until I sort of got the balance and the, and the sort of technique down. And it didn't take, you know, having, like you, having a base in um, yeah. skate technique. You it can didn't take balance. that long. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it was definitely a different technique. And the whole sort of concept, I think we used our arms a lot more when we were in college. And now it's all about, you know, using your core and figuring out how to sort of do that yeah. technique using your core. Uh, and then just, you know, when you take 10 years off from something like that, I, I found my balance was shot. And of course, you know, as I'm always telling people when they're sort of coming into skiing, uh, it's, it's balance. It's, it's ba it is balance, 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 balance. That's like particularly in skate, but also in classic. Like it's all about balance. Without balance, there's no efficiency. Without, yeah, without efficiency, balance, there's no efficiency. Yeah. Without efficiency, it is a nasty slog in the woods. Yeah, it's exhausting. <laughs> yeah, it's, that's what I'm discovering. I'm trying to become efficient. Yeah. When you watch your kids on TV, do you feel like you're watching a U.S. ski team, or do you feel like you're watching your kids? Does it seem real to you? <laughs> that's a really interesting question. And, you know, as I'm often telling people, like, sort of, my relationship with my kids and their ski career is really hardly any different than your relationship with them. In other words, I'm kind of watching it from afar like you are. I'm not very involved. Um, so it's mostly just like I'm watching, you know, kids on the US ski team, many of whom I know, many of whom I've known for a long time, and I feel very sort of personally attached to, to their successes and failures. Um, when I call up, you know, Ben or, you know, Catherine when she was racing um, or even, you know, Charlotte at the collegiate level uh, and I talk to them, it's often not really about skiing. Uh, it's usually, particularly with Ben, it's about other things. And, and Catherine was the same way, you know. It's, uh, I'm not their coach. I am not really, I, I have very little to do with their skiing career at this point other than just sort of trying to support them from a, yeah. you know a parental perspective so uh when i watch them on tv yeah it's mostly they're u.s skiers and i'm just so excited about where u.s skiing is right now uh, a couple hours later if i get men on the phone you know my relationship with him is much more just you know we're talking about things other than skiing so speaking of other than skiing what do you think of the mustache <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of the fact that Ben recognizes that um, part of skiing at that level is uh, developing a image, a persona. Uh, you know, it's uh, one of the things that I've, I remember telling my kids uh, frequently when it looked like they were going to make this sort of transition to this level is that um, you have to understand that you're sort of transitioning into entertainment now. Uh, it's not just like the ski racing of old, you know, there's, it's, it's different than that. Um, it's, you're, you're a public 
persona and you're in the entertainment world now. And so I love the fact that Van has sort of, and again, he may give you a completely different answer, but when it appears to me, he's sort of grasped that. And the mustache is part of that. Like, you know, he's, he's made this image for himself. And the bicep flex. And, and the, the bicep flex. And the, you know, just the, the silly, his silliness is, is sort of part of the, uh, the image that he's building out there. And it's a wonderful image because it's uh, lighthearted and it's fun. And it's, uh, I, I think it's great, particularly in a sport that, you know, can lend itself to seriousness. Yeah, the American, I, I don't want to call them kids, but they're all pretty young now, especially well, the kids the guys, by, so by our perspective. Yeah, they, they seem to be having a lot of fun. They, they seem to be a, a fun group when yes, you watch them. And, you know, thank you to Keegan and then Jesse and, you know, for building that model that these, this current crop of uh, younger skiers can, can work with. Yeah, awesome. John, thank you so much. Absolutely. It's nice to see you. <laughs> it was nice to be distracted for a little bit. I'm super nervous. I'm worried about the start. I don't want to get my poles broken, which is pretty common in a mass start race. And also, I don't want to go out too hard. When you're surrounded by a lot of other people, they can force the pace and you go into this adrenaline craze. So. I'm nervous about that. Once the race well, gets going, uh, oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it, but getting through the first kilometer, it's really scary. Got my number and my timing chip. Time to get dressed. That was an eye-opening experience. I keep thinking that ski races are like road races uh, at the start, where you can line up uh, wherever you want. You can just walk to the front of the line and put yourself in between people can't do that in a ski race it's first come first serve so and, unless it's seated which today it wasn't so by the time I got there with 15 minutes to race start I was like 15 or 20 rows back uh, so there were probably a hundred or more people in front of me when the race went off so it took a long time to wade through the traffic and try not to get my poles broken or skis stepped on. So you can't really go full speed with that many people around you. And we did a couple of loops where I could see the leaders and they were just getting further and further away. A couple of the people that I wanted to ski with were not in the lead pack, but they were in a chase pack. And um, I thought that I would try to ski with them the whole race, but I didn't anticipate the uh, situation at the start. So in the future, I have to get to the start a lot earlier. Or what I saw people doing was putting their skis down and then walking away. Uh, so maybe that's what I have to do. You put your skis in a position to reserve your place in the, maybe the second or third row would be appropriate for me. Anyway, uh, I was kind of spastic for a while trying to get through. Uh, somebody stabbed me in the leg with their pole. Uh, somebody stepped on my pole. Uh, there were a couple times where I almost went down. And you're going around corners at 30 miles an hour with, you know, people around you. And and it was uh, some icy, scary downhill S turns. And and it's it's a trip. Um, anyway, I I didn't keep my technique until I got tired enough and everybody was strung out and I ended up skiing with these two other guys um, much younger than me and I just did what they did and that helped me relax and keep my technique. So maybe from, I don't know, 10K on to the finish, I was using good technique and I uh, just did whatever they did. Um, when they made a move, I made a move, and I just tried to relax into their rhythm, and that really helped. So had I been able to do that earlier in the race, uh, I probably would have had a much faster time, but my skis were not fast. I was getting blown away on the downhills. Uh, there was one guy who I would catch him on every long uphill, and then he would disappear on the downhills. His skis were so much faster. So probably lost a lot of time, I'd say at least a minute or two on the downhills because um, there were a lot of them. Anyway, good experience. I was 32nd overall. Uh, Luc Tremblay from Quebec, who got second at the World Championships last year in my age group, uh, he beat me by 1.8 seconds there. Uh, he was three minutes ahead of me today. Some of that might have been related to um, 
the wax and how fast the skis were. Some of it was related to the start. He was up towards the front. Uh, a lot of it was probably related to my technique just falling apart for half the race. But uh, good experience. I know where I am. And if I'm going to the Worlds in March, I got two months to really up my game. This is Mark Islehart. He was one of my students when I was a coach uh, back at Mount Anthony in the mid 90s. In the 1900s. In the 1900s, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was great stuff. So, Mark, how was it today? It was a great, <laughs> great race. You know, I didn't do the classic one yesterday, so legs felt a little bit springy, but uh, snow was beautiful and wax was good. And I hear TVO screaming down my back within the first K. <laughs> so I knew that the race was on and uh, it was a lot of fun. I was actually got to ski a little bit with my daughter. She was a senior in high school. So really felt like sort of the continuum of skiing, you know, the next generation's coming along. A lot of my kids are now in their mid to late forties and they have kids who are in high school and graduating. So it's fun to watch the next generation coming up and to see these guys continuing in the sport. Yeah, it was great. Probably the, the most, uh, two things that I learned the most was just the positive nature of just getting on a bib and, and racing regardless of where you come in and then having fun on the descent. That was probably the best part of today's race was, uh, the S turns and just bombing down. So it's a lot of fun. Mark, was I a good coach or a bad coach? Tim, you were a great coach. And uh, <laughs> not the least of which was because you had us doing all kinds of stuff. Really, like we did mindfulness, we did meditation, we messed around. And then when it came to pushing, people pushed. It was great. Whatever, you, wherever you were at, you know, you're trying to turn your hardest, which try to instill in the, the kids that I help coach too. I wanted you to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> otherwise, otherwise you don't continue it's really doing painful. It. Otherwise. Yeah. Thanks, Mark. Yeah. Yeah. So I just bumped into Adam Martin Caldwell, who apparently just got married to a Caldwell. I did. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so Adam inspired me two years ago at the roller ski race on this very site when he passed me, and his technique just was so impressive. <laughs> I've tried to model it ever since. <laughs> How was it today? Oh, it was super fun. Yeah, we skied in a group of people and um, ended up sprinting it out with Braden, which surpassed my ex expectations for sure. So I was I was psyched to get second. Awesome, man. Are you retired now? Or are yeah, you still I, going? I stopped skiing uh, professionally last year. Um, so I've been working this year and yeah, still running and really enjoying skiing on the weekends, but different mindset, which has been cool. I see you running a lot on Strava. I wasn't sure if you were converting over to a uh, runner and not skier. Well, I, skiing is so much fun in the winter, but it's, um, I like skiing, roller skiing is maybe a little bit more of a, a workout or yeah. something like that. So running's really fun and I want to run a fast marathon at some point. What's your goal? Like Olympic trials qualifying or? Gosh, that would be fast and it would also be really hard. So we'll, we'll see. I haven't really, I haven't run a fast marathon, so I don't have like a good benchmark to. You've got like a 105 or 106 half, right? I did run a 106 half a few falls ago. But I think, I think a half and a marathon are very different. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> very different. Yeah. So Adam, I just watched you in the World Championships in Seafeld in 2019. Oh, wow, yeah. You and Andrew Musgrave only had bibs on, no shirts. <laughs> the commentators were wondering if you were going to be chafing after the race. So were you chafing? <laughs> Gosh, I don't remember that. That was, I mean, I, when it's hot, I, I feel like, like thermal dissipation is a little bit of a factor, so. <clears throat> Um, yeah, why not take the shirt off and get, get, address that at least. <laughs> All right, so one last question. As I get back into this, it seems to me that upper body strength is more of a factor than it's ever been. Do you think that's the case? Yeah, I, I think upper body strength is super important. And then honestly, core strength. Core strength. Probably maybe even more important than your lat. Okay, to... so you're using more core compression and less lat perhaps than in the past? Uh, I think just to like actually utilize any lat strength, you need to be like connected with your lower body um, core is in like your back and your and your abdominals, um, so, like all those little muscles in there. Okay, so I got to work on core strength. Awesome. Yeah, but I mean pull-ups and push-ups <laughs> are good too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, congratulations, Adam. Hey, thanks. Thanks Thank a you. lot. Just getting back to the studio and thinking a lot about the race on the way home. And I've got my work cut out for me. 
There were a lot of things that were working against me. I drove to New Jersey and back on Friday. I didn't sleep uh, last night and uh, drove over three hours to get there this morning. I don't know how much that actually factors into performance. I know it factors some, but leg strength, I think is the big factor and core strength. So more toes to bar. Um, and I'm gonna build a slide board. Next week is slide board week. I'm gonna get speed skater legs. <laughs> Cause I only have two months till the world championships and uh, I'm having my doubts. But you know what the same thing happened last year? My early season races weren't that good. And then by Worlds, uh, I was ready. So we'll see if we can do that again. All right, time to go home, eat, maybe do some treadmill and call it a week. Woody Kincaid breaks the American record in the 5,000 on the track. 12.51 something. Awesome. <laughs> anyway, that was fun to... Uh, Treadmill too.